Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Rick Tivnan, and welcome to Malden High School. Today, I'll be moderating this event with my colleague, Greg Hurley, from the Social Studies Department here at Malden High School. And we're fortunate enough today to be able to have this here in our library, and it's a debate between the three candidates for the Secretary of State of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, at this time, I'd like to introduce the candidates, uh, just in order of where they're sitting, from farthest away to closest. First, we have Malden City Councilor at Large, David Dargandville. <laughs> in the middle, we have the current Second Secretary of State of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, William Galvin. <laughs> and closest to me, we have Danny Factor. <laughs> I'm going to go over the rules of the debate before we start. Each candidate will make a two-minute opening statement. There will then be a 30-minute question period from me and my co-moderator. Uh, all of the questions used in today's debate are student-generated by the kids of Malden High School. We'll ask questions. Each question response has two minutes. Each candidate has two minutes to respond to the question. At a minute and 30 seconds, Tarika in the front row will hold up a yellow card that signifies you have 30 seconds left. And when the time is up, Tariqa will hold up a red card, which symbolizes your time is up. There is no saving time, there's no carrying over time, and there's no rebuttal to the response from the previous candidate. At the end of the debate, we will have a two-minute closing from each of the candidates. The first half an hour, as I said, will be um, questioned by the moderators, and then the last 20 minutes or so will be student-generated questions asked by the students themselves. So I believe it's decided prior to the debate that we would go alphabetically. So at this time, I'd like to give David D'Arcangelo an opportunity to make his opening statement. Thank you, and good afternoon. Thank you so much to Malden High School, Principal Brown, all of the students here, and Secretary Galvin and Danny Factor as well. So it's David D'Arcangelo. As you know, I'm a Malden City Councilor at Large and a two-time elected Malden City Councilor at Large. So go Malden. I'm very proud to be at Mullen High School today. So the race for Secretary of State is a very important one. The Secretary of the Commonwealth is responsible for being the Chief Information Officer for the state, being the Chief Elections Officer for the state, running the Securities and Exchange Division, the Corporations Division, all the historical records, the archives, and a myriad of other duties. It's a very important position. You're third in line to the governor. You're a constitutional officer. I got involved with public service. I went to my first public meeting when I was eight years old, worked on my first campaign when I was 10. I'm an elected official, and I know that once you're elected, you represent everybody. And that's what I want to do as your next Secretary of State. I'm in this to improve the human condition. Isn't that what good public service is all about? So that's what I'm trying to do. Really, I've based my entire campaign off of transparency and modernization. I've issued an 11-point detailed reform agenda that I think we can use to open up our public records here in the Commonwealth and all of the other offices under the Secretary of State's office. Let's use the force multiplier of technology to improve our Commonwealth. We need to lead here in the Commonwealth in terms of things like electronic voting. We can lead the way in the country and maybe even the world in terms of electronic voting. With our students today, the possibilities for our future is endless. So I'm very pleased to be here and discuss all these issues today. There's a lot of important issues like I mentioned. So uh, check out my website, daven2014.com, for more. I'm pleased we've gotten some endorsements recently, and I'm hoping this is the first of a series of debates we can have. I've been waiting all summer long for debates, so there's still eight days left, so I'm holding out hope we can have more. So thank you again. It's great to be here, and I'm looking forward to discussing all of these important issues with you today. Thank you very much. Uh, we by the rule of alphabetical order, Danny Factor will go next. Hello, everybody. My name is Danny Factor. I'm the Green Rainbow Party candidate uh, for Secretary of State. And to tell you a little bit about myself, I didn't grow up in Massachusetts. I grew up in New York City in the South Bronx uh, in a neighborhood that had uh, a lot of challenges. But we also had a sense of community. Uh, we marched together against the Vietnam War. We marched together against poverty. We marched together against pollution. I moved to Massachusetts uh, in the 1990s. Uh, I have a family, I have a 17-year-old that's actually over at Akron Boxborough High School uh, right now. Uh, and you know, the reason that I'm running uh, for Secretary of State from the Green Rainbow Party uh, is that the 
secretary runs the corporations uh, division in the state. And the corporations division should be the place where corporate greed is stamped out. And that's not happening right now. Uh, right now, uh, corporations are paying lots of money, officers of corporations, people uh, who work for corporations, uh, to pollute our electoral system. And the secretary's office is also in charge of the elections division. They're the chief elections officer. Our elections should be free and fair. They should be uh, open to everyone who wants to run, every belief, uh, every color, uh, every uh, nationality. Everyone should be able to run for office uh, and represent people. If you look right now uh, at the status quo, and you may have read this in the Boston Globe, only 50% of our elections are even contested right now. So as secretary, I plan to do something about that uh, and create contested elections where only 5% of our elections are contested. That will bring in the ideas that I know you're concerned about for your future, whether it be issues of poverty, whether it be your student loans, whether it be climate change. All these issues matter and they should be represented. Thank you. Secretary Gell. Thank you very much. First, let me thank Principal Brown, the faculty, and all of you for being here today. Uh, I happen to believe the office I hold is a very important one, not simply for the authority that it has, but for the fact that it deals directly with people. Perhaps more than any other statewide elected office, my office is about people coming and getting results from my office and the responsibilities I have. I'm very proud of the fact that during my tenure, the number of registered voters in Massachusetts is over 4 million. And I'm very proud also of protecting the rights of people to vote. I have fought hard against any efforts to require ID to vote or any other efforts that would suppress minority voters in Massachusetts. The last, a few months ago, most recently, we've enacted a law that will allow 16 and 17 year olds to pre-register to vote, as well as to do early voting across the board in the presidential election that's coming up in 2016. In addition to elections, I've been extremely active in protecting people's money. That's one of my responsibilities. And I have investigated securities brokers and others who've taken money or run scams. In fact, I've returned over $150 million back to Massachusetts residents who've been defrauded. I have been in the forefront of the national effort to make sure that financial services companies are responsible. So in all of the activities that I've been involved in, whether it's creating new businesses, making it easier for people to do that, you can go to my official website and see my effort has been to make my office consumer friendly, citizens friendly, and make sure that our citizens here in Massachusetts get the benefit of our government. I want to again thank you all very much for being here today. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I'd just like to um let the students know from this point forward we're going to be holding our applause for the rest of the debate. Um, the, all of these questions, as Mr. Pittman, were student generated. Um, the first category of issues we're going to be discussing is elections. First question we have, and um, we're going to again go in alphabetical order, would be what would you, as Secretary of the Commonwealth, say to someone who thinks that their vote does not matter? Yeah, I would say that. Our brave servicemen and women have fought and died for the right to vote. I hold that very precious and, and really one of our most important rights as citizens. So your vote absolutely does matter. And you know we have 6.6 .6 million people in this state. And a week from tomorrow, uh, you know about one out of every six is going to decide who the winner is. So we need to get participation rates up there. My plan for electronic voting and modernizing the whole procedure is going to get more people involved. It's going to get our youth involved, particularly under 40. The age of uh, voter participation under 40 is really not where it should be. It needs to be much, much higher. So my electronic voting is going to get it higher to be able to do that. So you know, you're talking to a guy that I've created hundreds of websites throughout my career. And I understand technology very well. I have a very active social media, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, my opponent here doesn't have a Facebook account, doesn't tweet out anything, doesn't have any social media presence, doesn't respond to email at all. And you know, in his opening statement, he indicated that voters have increased. Yeah, they've only increased as a result of our population increase. The data that we have indicates that the voting percentage 
really hasn't increased at all, despite the fact that he spent millions of dollars to promote himself with our taxpayer money on these public service announcements, which, by the way, I've been asking for 180 days. I sent in a public records request asking him, Mr. Secretary, how many public service announcements have you been in? How many public service announcements did you produce? How much did they cost to air? Rudimentary questions that the Secretary has refused to answer. So I'm hoping here today he can tell us how many millions of dollars he spent on these self-promotional PSAs, which really hasn't driven out the percentage of voter turnout that we need. We need a much higher percentage of voter turnout. So as your next Secretary of the Commonwealth, I'll engage and I'll go further than the election bill that was just passed. I'll go further in pre-registering people to vote. And I'll make it a priority that I will not appear in these self-promotional public service announcements. No more PSAs for politicians. Thank you. Mr. Fetter. Well, there's a lot that we can do to make um, our elections uh, freer and fairer. And yes, your vote does count, but I can't tell you how many young people come up to me and say, you know what, Danny, I'm sick and tired of the system. There's too much money in the system. It's polluting it. We end up just getting the same old people uh, every year. And as I said, um, the statistics bear it out. If 50 to 60 percent of our races for state house are uncontested, that means that your ideas uh, are not uh, getting represented. So what do we need to do about it? Uh, first of all, I would reduce the number of signatures required to run for office as a way of encouraging candidates to run for public office. Right now, the big money candidates actually buy their signatures. They pay people to get signatures. And that's how they get on the ballot. I would also publish something that doesn't exist right now. I call it a statewide voters guide. Um, and that guide uh, would have statements from all the candidates that qualify uh, from the ballot of equal length. So you would be educated before you go in the voting booth about the position of each candidate, not just the ones that have the amount of money to buy your vote. Um, I would also provide a small public stipend. Uh, to uh, community organizations and nonprofit organizations that would be willing to hold uh, debates uh, that would include all of the candidates. And that would encourage the fact that we would have more of an exchange. Uh, this is the only debate so far that uh, the Secretary has agreed to uh, with one week to go before election. There needs to be more of an exchange so other people besides the people of Malden uh, can uh, learn about the candidates. So there's a lot of reforms that we can do to make our elections more contested and more reflective uh, of our ideas. Thank you. Secretary. Thank you. Uh, certainly every vote does count. We have countless cases every year in Massachusetts where you have local races that are decided by one or two votes and there's a recount. I'm sure some of you may remember you're a little young, but in 2000, the presidency of the United States was decided by a few hundred votes in Florida. So every vote does count, which makes it tragic when people don't vote. And that's one of the biggest problems I have with my two opponents. Mr. D'Angelo misses four elections in the last five years. And Mr. Factor didn't vote in the race for the United States Senate last year when your senator from Malden was elected. Uh, I think it's rather important to vote. And I think it's very hard to be the chief election officer of the state and asking people to vote when you don't vote yourselves. So uh, I think that's a very serious concern. You know, the comment that turnouts haven't increased is just not true. You know, there's an old saying, liars figure, but figures don't lie. The reality is we've had over 4 million voters on the rolls, and the last two presidential elections, we've had over 3 million people vote in this state. We have a population of about 6.6 .6 million, it's 6.6 .6 million when you take out young people who are ineligible to vote, those who are non-citizens, and those who are unable to vote. We actually have a very high percentage vote, of turnout. But we can always do so better. Making it easier to vote by early voting, by some of the other changes that have been made and will be made, I think are a great way to make that happen. Another student-generated question, and the question is, what is your opinion on lowering the voting age to 16 to give students more of a voice in the process? Uh, this time we'll start with uh, Danny Factor. Uh, so I support that, uh, and I think that there are also other populations as well uh, that are our neighbors uh, that live here and deserve to vote. 
uh, as well. Uh, right now, uh, people uh, who are uh, immigrants, uh, whether they're documented or undocumented, uh, people make distinctions between them. Uh, I don't think that distinction should be made. I think that every single person deserves dignity, respect, and love. And when I mean everyone, I mean everyone, regardless of race, regardless of gender, regardless of age, regardless of nationality, regardless of mental or physical disability, regardless of sexual orientation, regardless of gender identity, regardless of whether someone is a documented or undocumented immigrant, regardless of whether they are a prisoner or free. And there are states where prisoners have the right to vote uh, as well. Now, I believe that democracy is democracy. And just by the nature of being a human being, you have rights. And what sort of message is it saying uh, when you're not included? You know, that's not how, how we do it in school, right? We learn to include you know, you know, everyone, and that's how it, it should be. Now, I believe also that every single person, uh, regardless of, you know, of, of age, regardless of their nationality, uh, also deserves uh, an economic bill of rights. What does that mean? The right to healthy food, the right to clean water, the right to decent shelter, the right to single-payer health care. I'm the only candidate of the three of us that's on record supporting single-payer health care, uh, and the right to a safe and a clean environment. And that last part uh, is about our future, and that's something we should all be concerned about. So yes, uh, lower the voting age to 16, absolutely yes. Mr. Secretary. The uh, law that I just referenced, which will allow pre-registration of 16 and 70 year olds, will allow them to be pre-registered. To actually change the voting age would require a change in both federal and state law, which in the case of Massachusetts would require a constitutional amendment, which would have to be voted on by the people. Uh, at this point, there is no pending proposal for that. Um, I, I think we're making a good step to encourage younger people to get involved earlier by the pre-registration. It's not about capacity. I, I'm quite sure that at 16, especially an educated group like you folks, certainly have the capacity to make intelligent decisions about public office. But as you know, there's a long tradition of maturity uh, being assigned initially at 21 and then dropped to 18. I was one of the people that was benefited by the drop to 18-year-old voting. And I think it comes with an acknowledgement of the maturity of the population. I think that maturity has occurred, and I would support an effort to change the Constitution. But that's the way it would have to occur. It would have to occur by the people, all the voters, voting on the issue of dropping the voting age to 16. Thank you. Also, Doc Angelo. Thank you. Yes, so I am in favor of making the registration for 16 and 17 years old that was in the Senate bill that got signed into law. So I'm very much in favor of that. I am not in favor of opening up the voting age to 16 and 17 year olds though. So I think that's uh, maybe something for the future we could plan. So uh, while the pre-registration is good, the actual voting, no, we'd have to change the constitution. That'd be too difficult. But I just have to respond to something that the secretary said, you know, and, and Danny too. So I'm the only person in this race. I have a detailed 11 point plan that's been out there for months now that common cause and a lot of the other good government groups have looked at that really will level the playing field and open up voting. And it's so many good procedures in there. And the secretary, he's been attacking me personally. That's something maybe you guys don't understand uh, if you've been, unless you've been following this campaign. I haven't gone after him personally and I won't. No ad hominem attacks by me. If he's had no problem telling the state house news that I spew more lies than a broken sewer pipe or that I'm a techno babbler. Well, you know what, Mr. Secretary? I'm the first person with a disability to ever reach a statewide ballot. So by you insulting me, by extension, you're insulting any other person who wants to dare to run well, take to be to that, a sir. statewide candidate. I take exception to that. And really, I it's uncalled you. I've for. Insulted and what's happened? I thought I would have a chance to answer. I didn't know there was well, a No, you don't have a chance to make mistakes. I thought there would be rebuttals. Right. Gentlemen, you, you can continue with your answer. Your continue, continue. Thank you. So what you've done, really, is it's unbecoming. And you've lowered the status of the office. You're supposed to be the chief elections officer for the state, and I would hope you would comport yourself in that way. Don't just believe me. Look at the Department of Justice. He can say he wants more people to vote and their vote counted. This is the Department of Justice that found you in noncompliance for reporting our grave 
service men and women's military ballots that is unacceptable to me i will change that look at the national freedom thank you thank you categories now and we're going to talk about financial services um, and this question will direct uh, first to Secretary Gellman. What can the Secretary of the Commonwealth's office do to ensure that financial institutions compete on level playing fields in your opinion? Well, when we talk about competing we want to make sure that they protect those who are investors or customers and that's something I've been extremely active upon. The Secretary of State has the responsibility to regulate anybody who's in the risk business when it comes to financial advice, financial products. So if you buy a mutual fund, if you buy an annuity, if there's a credit card issue, the Secretary of State's office is often involved in that. We've tried to make sure that all of those institutions recognize what we call their fiduciary duty. What do I mean by that? They have to put the customer first. They do not have the right to cheat the customer. And in that capacity, we've got back $150 million back for people who've been cheated in Massachusetts. Not only that, we've led the country in terms of identifying some of the problems that people have seen. Most recently, we've seen some Ponzi schemes. Maybe you don't know what Ponzi schemes are. Ponzi schemes are tricks where people try to get people to invest money. Money is an investment. And they basic, but they're really not investing in anything. It's a scam. And we've un 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 uncovered a number of these scams in recent months and, in fact, brought them forward. You may have all heard of the Bernard Madoff case of a couple of years ago where Mr. Madoff told these people he was investing all their money and he never was. He just stole their money. That's something that you have to be on guard against. So in terms of making it even, we want to make sure that everyone knows the regulations. We want to make sure that every company that comes here knows that they will be treated fairly if they treat their customers fairly. Thank you. Next counselor, <coughs> Dr. Anthony. Thank you. And just to be clear, if you go to the Secretary of State's website right now, you cannot find an organizational chart for the Securities and Exchange Division. You can't find out who the head of Rice is. None of the employees are listed. There's no annual reports. So really what we're left to do is believe his word. So if you look at that, you look at the front page of the Boston Globe, which he's been on it twice in a month, two negative articles. The first one, Galvin often backs secrecy over public disclosure. Or the second one, Gal in Galvin's contracts, little public process. This is the person who used a no-bid contract situation, and then he used the same vendor that he did for his state work on his campaign work. That will not happen under me. Most of the people here, and certainly all of the students, weren't even born when this person take off, took office. He's been in the State House for 42 years. It is time for a change. All of my policies have been vetted by good government groups. They're all about openness and transparency. They're all about using technology to make things easier for you, the public, to get these records. They're your public records. They're my public records. You deserve to see them. So whether it comes to financial issues, whether it comes to elections, or any other issue, this secretary has gotten the grade of F from the National Freedom of Information Coalition. The grade of F from the National Freedom of Information Coalition when it comes to freedom of information. That's not a good record. And as your chief information officer, I'm going to do a much better job. I'm going to turn that F into the A. And instead of just relying and, you know, going with, uh, he likes to blame everybody else but himself and take responsibility. So I would ask you, Mr. Secretary, 950 CMR 32.065, which reads, every custodian, unless otherwise required by law, is encouraged to waive fees of when disclosure would benefit the public interest. Why don't you think it's in the public interest to let people know how many millions of dollars you spent on yourself Thank with you, PSAs? Mr. Counselor, Mr. Beck. Well, it's a great question because it's about fraud and protecting I, you know, at the Green Rainbow Party, believe that fraud actually has many faces. There is the fraud uh, that uh, unsavory people uh, bring onto people, and we do have a responsibility to protect people from that. But there's also the fraud uh, that the government brings on people uh, as well in regard to financial matters. 
Uh, one of the things that I'm very concerned about, and the Green Rainbow Party is very concerned about, is that I don't believe that elected officials uh, should be taking contributions from the very companies that they are charged with regulating. That is obviously uh, a conflict of interest. Uh, so I think that the larger problem you know, is the problem of the money in politics. Uh, the ultimate solution uh, is one that already the people decided 10 years ago. It was called the Clean Elections Law. It took place uh, back, uh, as I said, over 10 years ago. It was passed by the people to take the money out of politics. Uh, and what happened was that our legislature overturned it. They basically went against the will of the people. I would have liked to see Secretary Galvin speaking out more about, uh, uh, more about that happening. Because basically, the people you know, had the right to have clean elections, it was taken away from them. And as Secretary, I would be uh, a spokesperson for making the system fairer and making sure that the elected officials that we have are actually regulating companies without having the conflict of interest of receiving contributions from them at the same time. Okay, this one is uh, relating to public records, and we'll start with uh, the secretary. Do you believe that the citizens of Massachusetts can easily access public records that they need? Why or why not? I believe they can, but they need additional help. One of the problems with public records is every agency collects public records, and public records oftentimes contain personal information. For instance, when you present a public record to the Registry of Motor Vehicles or some other place, you're providing a lot of public information. There is an obligation both to make the record public, but there is also the important thing of protecting your privacy, your social security number, or other information you might give up. So it's very difficult. We're in a process of transition when it comes to public records because many agencies are now going to electronic records and setting up new processes for that. My office has the responsibility to help citizens get access to public records. In fact, this year alone, we've helped over 600 appeals on public records. We have to do so fairly, and we have to protect citizens in the process. Because in the process of doing that, we have to make sure that private information is not disco discovered. I think we've all read and seen in recent times where there's been breaches of security and transactions of stores, people's identities have been taken. You could take a birth record and create an identity with somebody. You could take a death record and know that somebody was already deceased and assume their identity. So protecting people's records, right to records, is important. But protecting people's privacy and citizens' privacy is also important. Um, Mr. Backer? Well, I also have a, a great respect uh, for individual privacy. But the concerns about the way that the public records law in the Secretary's office is being interpreted uh, does not have to do with those instances. This has to do with instances uh, where uh, many uh, news outlets uh, have been looking to get information for a story that has to do uh, with the public uh, interest, and they've been denied records. There was a request made by the Boston Globe uh, in regard to a criminal case that took place in the 1950s, and this office uh, denied uh, the records. After the news story came out, uh, they, uh, they changed their mind. Uh, but the fact is, is that transparency is an extremely important part of government. Our government is democratic uh, without having transparency. Now, I propose that, you know, certainly in this day and age, uh, all records should be free and uh, available to the public uh, within seven days uh, and available online. Uh, in addition to that, uh, there should not be a cost to pay for public records. Remember that you are the government. Uh, the government is the people. These are your records. These are things that you may want to find out uh, about create better policies in the state, uh, and you deserve it. Certainly, there are some issues of personal privacy that have nothing to do with public policy that should be protected. But the state right now has gone uh, overboard, using that uh, as an excuse uh, to block records that are in the public interest. Thank you, sir. And Councilor Angelo. 
Thank you very much. And I, I have a record on this. As city council at large, there's an ordinance that says uh, the departments are supposed to be producing annual reports. Well, that wasn't done until I came along. And they fought me at first, but now they're producing them. And guess what? We've improved Malden City Government as a result of it. So I have a record on that, just to be clear. Also, I have put forward a positive 11-point reform agenda. My number one point is update, simplify, and enhance the state's public records law. And not only the law, because as secretary, you're limited. You're not a legislator, right? But I would use my bully pulpit to try to update the law, but also the regulations. I would promulgate new regulations as secretary and, and work those as well, but I would also put people in places to be able to interpret them as more open instead of less open. This secretary has gotten an F in Freedom of Information. And if you don't want to believe the National Freedom of Information Coalition, look at the Globe story that cites the Reporters Committee, and the quote is, the public records and open meeting law of Massachusetts are among the weakest of any 50 states. And there is a picture of Secretary Galvin right there. Don't just believe me. Look at the globe. Look at these other good government groups that say we're doing an awful job. And the overlying theme here is the Secretary has had 20 years. 20 years. He could have had debates. He could have gone on John Keller or uh, been in the globe or done an editorial. He chose not to do that because it's not his priority. I'm telling you, it is absolutely my priority. If we don't have freedom of information, then what other freedoms can we expect? It's the absolute bedrock of our democracy, and I believe strongly in it. That's why I've made it my number one reform agenda. That's why I have a track record as an elected official on it. So I can be entrusted with that. I've been an election officer for the city of Boston, so just go back to that earlier thing you mentioned where I don't vote in elections. I have my voting history here. Matter of fact, since 1995, you've only voted in two more elections than me. And I'm not making excuses to miss in those elections. Thank you, Councilor. Excuse yeah, me, I'm sorry, but you're out of time. Thank you. At this time, we're going to transition and we're going to allow the students to ask some questions. Um, I know some of you came with questions prepared, others did not. I will call on you one at a time. Um, we'll take as many questions as we can in the time allotted. Um, we're gonna give each candidate, again, two minutes to respond to each of the students' questions. When you stand up, I just ask you to um, tell the candidates your name and uh, maybe what grade you're in. So, along those lines, I see one hand right back there. You're up. Stand up, stand up. My name is Javon St. Paul. I have a question for... We're all three gonna respond. Oh, I'm in tenth grade. I was gonna ask that you said that changing the law for a sixteen year old would be too much work. So you're not willing you're not willing to or do you not think it's worth it to do all that work? It's literally too much work. So fantastic. Um, we'll let Councillor Archangel Darkangel start and then we'll let the other two candidates speak. Great. So yeah, I, I just don't believe that I believe the current where we have 18 years is a good thing. I think the pre-registration of 16 and 17 years old is good. The real, the real answer is it's very difficult to change the state constitution. And I'm not sure you're gonna be able to get the public opinion behind you to be able to do that. Am I open to it? Absolutely, let's discuss it. And I, I as secretary, plan to convene a whole uh, set of policies to be able to engage the youth and let's get them involved more in voting in the election process. So. You know, myself, I've been, I went to my first public meeting when I was eight years old, worked on my first campaign when I was 10. So obviously for me, public service is in my blood and I really believe everybody should participate. So it's certainly not the work that I'm afraid of. And again, realize that as Secretary of State, I'm not a legislator, I'm an executive. So being able to change the law, I can offer bills and things like that and use my bully pulpit. But at the end of the day, you're gonna need to build consensus around it. So if that's what I hear from the, from the students and the youth across the Commonwealth and the other people in the Commonwealth, then that's something we should do, absolutely. So I really believe we need to do our best to bring as many people into the process as possible. Let me just make that clear. Absolute, voting is the absolute bedrock of our society. That freedom of information and these issues that we're talking about, that's what my whole 11 point plan is based on. Let's make things more transparent. Let's bring more people into the system. Let's modernize. You know how we're going to do it? We're going to use trans we're going to use modernization to increase transparency. You know, the, the secretary doesn't have a Facebook account or a Twitter account. He doesn't use social media or email. I do. I understand that 
the next generation is going to want online voting. I've come up with a proposal for it. So is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. But you know what? You've got to start somewhere. I'm going to be the one with the energy and the creative ideas to build consensus and bring everybody in. So yes, I want you and all your peers to be able to vote and take part in the Democrat process that we have. Mr. Secretary. Well, you're getting an excellent lesson on how politicians try to change their mind. You heard him say he was against 16-year-old. Now he's not so sure. You heard me say, I'm for it, and I explained how to do it. And the reason I'm for it is because I believe in the maturity of young people. I believe that it's important to give people the opportunity to express themselves and be participants. That's one of the reasons I supported pre-registration of 16 and 17 year olds, so that you will be right on the rolls in time for the 2016 election for the next president. The only way that's gonna happen though, the only way that you're gonna get that change is to be active and to insist, as this young man just did by asking the question, where do you stand? You heard from me a clear affirmative answer. I was in favor. You heard from him, he wasn't in favor, but now he thinks he might be. There you see it. There's the flip back and forth. I think what's really important is honesty. Honesty about where you stand and what you stand for. I think it's also important to tell the truth about voting. He doesn't vote. He doesn't vote. He missed four elections in the last five years. How can you be the chief election when officer you don't and vote? Using your he thought it was more important to take $100 from another city to leave Malden for the day. Four, four times in five years. I think it's very important to vote. And I think the fact that you want to vote is a good thing. And I think the fact that he doesn't vote is a bad thing. Thank you. Mr. Becker. You know, I, I think before uh, we should all be uh, you know, careful about uh, criticizing, uh, Secretary uh, Galvin has been in office now for 19 years. I've never heard him before speak out about 16-year-olders having uh, the right to vote. You know, and certainly you think that at some point along the line, you know, he could have done something and at least spoke out to start to initiate the process uh, uh, for uh, youth voting. Uh, so 16-year-olds having a vote is something that I have always uh, supported. And I think that was an excellent question uh, about the process. Um, and the Secretary is correct that while it would require a constitutional amendment, there are still things that we can do on the municipal level. The Green Rainbow Party uh, is a grassroots party. You know, we believe that people matter, and the way that you make change is you organize, beginning on the local ma on the local level, one person uh, at a time. So I would encourage um, the gentleman who asked the question um, to get a group together, go to your town hall, um, and get an item on the warrant to have 16-year-olders to be able to have the right to vote uh, in Malden in the municipal election. And that's the way that movements uh, begin. Um, part of the reason that it's so important uh, to have uh, the youth vote is there are issues that I know, I have a 17-year-old uh, myself, and there are issues that he is terribly concerned about our future. I mentioned climate change, for example. We need to make a fast, extremely fast transition to renewable energy or else it will be compromising uh, your future. We're gonna need your help uh, in that. So that's why you know, I wanna work with people of all types, including young people, to make sure that our future is not compromised. We need to transition to renewable energy uh, faster Thank and- you, Mr. Beckett. We have time for one more question from the students. Um, John Lorena. Good afternoon, my name is Jonathan Pacheco. Um, I'm a senior here at Malden High School. And I was just curious as to what has brought, what has influenced all of you to bring the debate here at Malden High School today. Thank you. Uh, why don't we start with Mr. Secretary. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, what influenced me was I have a lot of uh, opportunity during my tenure to meet with young people, uh, to begin programs in schools. And I find they're an excellent place, not only to get the message out to young people, but also to influence their families. When a couple of years ago we were counting the census here in Ma Massachusetts, we worked through schools to get the message out. I'm delighted that when I picked up the phone and organized this debate and I called your principal, he was very anxious to participate. I also knew that my opponent lived in Malden and I figured he wouldn't have any difficulty getting here. Uh, and I extended the opportunity through his party chair uh, to participate and asked her to 
have him in, introduce Mr. Factor. Something got lost in the translation, but I'm delighted that Mr. Factor is here today. Um, I think involving young people and taking, making it real for people. You know, I know you study civics. I know you've read about the United States history and Constitution and all that. But making it real, what is it all really about? Forcing us to ask questions before an audience like you, I think is a very good thing. Uh, you know, we could have had many audiences. We could have people holding signs and running around, but that's really not what it's all about. It's about, I think, educating people, providing you the opportunity to hear us. <coughs> and I'm very grateful for the forum that you presented today. Mr. Factor. I think it's terrific uh, that forums like this uh, take place uh, in schools. Uh, one of the things that I'm concerned about uh, as far as our education system right now uh, is that you know, we have uh, had a change in the last uh, 10 or 15 years uh, towards uh, what's called the standards movement, what's called teaching to the test, uh, and not enough opportunities uh, for students to have a critical thinking where they can express their ideas and talk freely about, uh, yes, political ideas uh, in school. Uh, because ultimately, you know, what school is supposed to do is prepare us uh, for the world to prepare us to live in a democracy. And I will say that you know, one of the things that I'm sure you're learning is that there are many ways to interact uh, in a democratic society. One of the ways that we've talked about uh, is voting. Uh, but there are other ways to be democratic as well. Uh, there's protest. Uh, last week, I took part in a protest uh, to save Silver Ma Maple Forest in Arlington. Uh, I walked into the forest. I knew that I was trespassing, but I did it because I cared about not only my future, but your future. And I was arrested. Um, and uh, I, I'm going to have a court date, and I'm going to be uh, saying uh, that I was innocent because I did it out of necessity uh, for our future. I consider that to be just as democratic an act uh, as voting. And I think what we can all learn about in school is that ultimately, school is about learning how to live in a democratic society. So I'm glad that we're here today uh, as part of that. Thank you. Thank you. And, and just to be clear, Danny and I have already appeared in two debates together. And uh, WGBH Radio offered that. The secretary ducked it. NECN offered to debate. The secretary ducked it. Fisher College, the secretary ducked it. The Lowell Sun, secretary ducked it. So the reality is, this is a person who's only debated one time in 20 years. There's been articles written about how he left his Democrat primary challenger, bon John Bonifaz, waiting on the stage in Medford, right? So it doesn't match with what the reality is. So you can believe, either believe the Boston Globe and the National Freedom of Information Coalition, who's given him an F and, you know, he doesn't want to show up. And, you know, he, you can keep attacking me personally all you want, Mr. Secretary, but the result is, you just have not gotten it done. You've been there for 20 years. Debate's been stifled. Documents have been kept secret. Transport, uh, modernization has been just non-existent. So I represent new ideas, new energy, openness. You represent more of the same. Fs in transparency, no debate, stifled debate, right? And, and you want to talk about me taking $100. I was serving as, a, as an election officer for the city of Boston to ensure the election process. Now, I'm not making any excuses for missing those votes. Under my proposals, I would have been able to vote in any precinct in the state, which can happen, and that can happen soon, right? You but then when the Boston Globe asked you, what did you say about your own voting record? I forced my wife and daughter to vote. That's what you said about your own wife and daughter. Well, my wife was a school committee person here in Malden, and I've never had to force her to vote. I really believe in the Democrat process. So you either believe these national groups and the Boston Globe and everybody else that's really painted a very bad picture, or you can get with my ideas of transparency and modernization. That's the choice in this race. This is the face of Beacon Hill. So you have a choice on November 4th to go with the future you, Gelsen, or to stay in the past. Time is up. Thank you. That is going to conclude the question and answer part of this debate. Uh, we're going to give each of the candidates uh, opportunity to give a closing statement at this point and then we will conclude the debate. Uh, I believe we started alphabetically when we started, so we'll go backwards uh, this time. So the Secretary can make his closing statement for two minutes. Well, thank you again very much, and thank you all for being here today. 
Uh, I'm very proud of my record, like I said. Proud of the opportunity to make sure more people have the right to vote in Massachusetts and have registered to vote. You've heard a lot of talk about the Boston Globe today. What you haven't heard is they endorsed me on Saturday for re-election because I think they know of my competence and my ability, and they understand that I understand all the aspects of the office. You've heard a lot today about transparency. All I ask you to do is go to my website, my official website, and see all the information that's there. See the opportunities it presents to you to create a new business, to get information about voting, to get information about any kind of activity, historical preservation, all sorts of activities in Massachusetts. Get information about lobbying, get information about financial services. I'm very proud of having helped people. I have an office that people come to. We have people come looking for an apostille because they come from a foreign country and they need documents to go over there. We help people. Pick up the phone and call my office. You'll get live people answering the phones, helping people. That's my record. It's a record of helping people. And that's why I want to continue that work, because I believe I can help more people over the next four years. I can help people protect their financial interests. I can help people expand their voting rights. I can help people create new businesses. That's my record. It's there to see. As I said, I'm pleased to have been endorsed not only by the Boston Globe, by the Springfield Republican, by a lot of people that know me, by a lot of people that understand what I've done and what I've accomplished. I'm grateful for your presence here today, and I ask for your continuing support. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary. Uh, Mr. Thacker. This year, we finally have uh, a choice. Uh, on the one hand, uh, we have candidates who want to buy their way into office uh, with money uh, or to remain there uh, forever uh, and feel uh, entitled. And that entitlement uh, breeds uh, a sense of arrogance. Um, on the other hand, a uh, vote for Green Rainbow Party candidate, uh, like myself, uh, is a vote for a fairer system where democracy counts and money does not count. It is also a vote uh, for health care. As I said, I'm the only candidate uh, in this race that supports single-payer health care. It is a vote for our planet. I'm the only candidate that supports ending all fossil fuel infrastructure. Uh, it is also a vote to end student debt. I support student loan uh, forgiveness. Uh, the right choice uh, is to not vote for either of the two major parties, Democrats or Republicans, and vote for the Green Rainbow Party, which is for people, planet, uh, and peace. Please learn more about me at my website, electfactor.org, uh, and I ask for your vote. Thank you very much uh, for having me, um, Malden High School, and thank you to my fellow candidates for being here. Thank you very much, Mr. Thacker. And finally, a closing statement from Councilor Doc Angelo. Thank you very much. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Secretary and Danny, as well, for being here. Principal Brown, I appreciate it. It's David D'Archangelo. You know me. Two-time elected Malden City Councilor at large. You know why I'm in this. I'm in this to make Massachusetts better. Let's increase transparency. Let's use modernization to increase transparency. The Secretary's had 20 years. He just hasn't gotten it done. I've been endorsed, too, by several papers, the Boston Herald, Lowell Sun, and others, too, and other organizations as well. We both have our endorsements. At the end of the day, I know what they want. He said that you can call his office. Well, you know what? I know what you want. You want to be able to chat with his office. You want to be able to send an email. You want to be able to contact over Twitter and Facebook and all the other means that we have now. We live in the technological center of the world, and there's no reason we shouldn't have the most technologically advanced Secretary of State's office in the world. Instead, we're getting F in things like transparency. That's outrageous. I'm going to turn that F into an A. I'm going to make it easier for you to register to vote, take part in the elections process. I'm going to register more people to vote. I'm the only one with a detailed 11-point plan that's been vetted by good government groups. The Secretary's had 20 years. He could have tried to do any of those things. At the end of the day, he has not gotten it done. So the choice in this race is very stark. You can go with the new, creative, fresh approach with ideas of how to increase transparency and modernization. We can go with the status quo that's gotten an F in freedom of information and just hasn't modernized. So the choice is yours. I appreciate being here. It's David D'Archangelo. I'm trying to model for all those with a disability out there. I may be the first person with a disability ever to make a statewide ballot. It's time that somebody like with a disability is represented up on Beacon Hill. They have never been. I'm looking to become the first. 
Thank you again, Principal Brown, my opponents here. I appreciate being with you. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you for the opportunity. At this time, I'd like to introduce Principal Dana Brown to close out the debate. First and foremost, thank you to the candidates and Mr. Secretary for coming today. Thank you to our students, as always. Those questions were great. To our ACE moderators, Mr. Hurley and Mr. Tibman. And just uh, for the folks in the audience, this came together between uh, Thursday afternoon and Friday lunchtime. So I'm really proud of the work our students did uh, over 24, 48 hours to pull this off. Thank you again to their uh, excellent teachers, Ms. Brown, Mr. Hurley, and Mr. Uh, Tibman. Thank you again for the candidates, and I hope uh, you, know, you can stay around for a couple of minutes to maybe answer some questions that the students didn't get a chance to ask. Thank you again, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for coming.